if I told you that it's not yet too late to be the person you always thought that you could be, that each and every one of us are born into a story, and that we have to disrupt the story that we were born into, we get to choose what path we're on. And sometimes, sometimes all we need is a reminder that there are people already doing that work. Joining me today, Andrew Boa, Ramla Ali, Blake Leeper, and Marcus Rashford. People who stepped out of the box that they were born into and used it as a launching pad in the world of sports and culture. I'm Jenea Future Khan, and you're tuned in to FM Broadcast. Blake, your audacity is compelling. Your courage is a commitment. It's not easy to be fighting against not just a massive, beloved institution like the Olympics, but from what I understand, you just want to run. I just want to run. You know, I, you know, being born missing both of my legs and, and growing up my whole life as a disabled child, you know, I've, I've been judged. Um, I've been written off. I've been told that I would never walk, never run, never play sports. And, and now as a professional athlete trying to qualify for the Olympic Games, it seems like my disability is the only thing that does matter. You're missing your legs. There's no reason why you should be, you know, top eight in the world or, or top six in the world, breaking these world records. And, and because you are, there, there must be an advantage in your legs. The, the blades are the blades. There's, there's, there's no, you know, there, there's no rocket to it. There's no skates under it. There's no mechanical. Like, if I don't move the blades, if I don't move the running legs, they don't go anywhere. That's right. And how quickly those narratives shift. Uh, you were told you were less than for most of your life. And then when you achieved excellence, you're now being told you're too much, right? I would get the pity clap, like, oh, that's, oh, that's so inspirational. Like, oh, you know what I mean? People would feel so good about their self for clapping for me, <laughs> right? Like, oh, we, we did a good job, guys. We let him in and we clapped for him. Good for him. The second I ran a qualifying time that would have meddled in any Olympic games, you know, four or five days later, I'm getting letters from the, the committee saying, wait, wait, wait. Your times have been disqualified because you have an unfair advantage. Too good. Too good. Too good. Pop, pop, pop. No, pop, pop, pop. Wait, it says pop, it says pop, pop. Did you say that? What? It says pop, it says pop, pop. It says pop, it says pop, pop. Like, if I didn't play football, I wouldn't have had a, a dream, like, at, at a young age. And oh, when I moved area, they all had like dreams of what they wanted to be when they was older, and they had like their lives like planned out. And where I come from, it's just it's it's not like that. It's the opposite. You just work to get through each day, basically, and people go through the whole lives doing that. There's there's different reasons why I want to help, you know, underprivileged backgrounds. But the main reason is to allow them to to have a dream. I don't see myself as a disruptor. I'm just someone who has been through what people are still going through and I managed to find a way out and, you know, gain a, a platform. Try and make a change for the next generation of, of people to make whatever they're going through a little bit easier. For me, that's, that's what I didn't have as a kid and that's what I want them to have when they grow up. Each of you has a, a relationship, I think, a practice of stepping out of the box. Ajra, you are someone who is very much outside of the box, and there is a constant effort to put you into a box, to say, this is who you should be. And instead of simply accepting that, you thought, no, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. What led you to decide, this is what I have to do? What compelled you to step off script? It's feeling less than, always. It's feeling like an outsider and an alien. What happened is I started kind of growing into myself and, and getting out of my own way. And I cared about this stuff before my career took off. Like mental health has always been a part of my life because it's something that I embody and feel every single day. You share something so traumatic in your life and you speak about something that's so that you've thought all these years is so shameful and has brought you so much pain and you put your hand up and then all these people around you start putting their hands up as well and they nod in acknowledgement and they nod in respect and they nod because they've also felt like that. And then I started speaking about it and I saw other people that looked like myself and you, you know, throughout school, I never wanted to look like this. I didn't want to have braids. I didn't want to be black. You know, always, always feeling like I had to mold myself into something else. And it was like, I felt like I found my community not only in mental health, but also the black community as well. 
And then I started kind of figuring out who I was and I felt supported in doing that. Ramallah, you just went pro. Women's boxing is something that, it feels like it's newer to people. We saw the advent of women's boxing in the Olympics around 2012. You are still carving out a path. I feel like women have been you know, boxing and competing for a really long time. And you know, a lot of these media outlets are like, oh, look what we're doing. You know, we're promoting women's boxing. We're great, we're great. If anything, they should be ashamed and disgusted of themselves. They, it's taken them this long to promote and highlight women's boxing. So who or what part of you did you need to confront first in order to be the boxer that you are today? You know, everyone says like your biggest opponent is yourself. And that is true. You know, there, there are days where you don't want to get out of bed. And it's true what people say, like the biggest obstacle is just getting there. Anything that's happened to you that day, any troubles, anything that you're going through, you leave it at the door. Thank you. In terms of what change football can do for communities, I, d I don't think we're at like maximum potential. I honestly do feel like in my generation of footballers like all around the world, there's, there is something different about us. Maybe because I was the, the first one to do something, people see it that way. But I, I don't, I just see it as like I'm one of many, many leaders that if they want to do something, they, they can put their minds to it. And yeah, between, between you know, the, the community of football, lots of change can can happen. But it's important that it goes alongside with change that's happening in, in the country anyway. If you could tell a younger version of you or the next generation of disruptors to come, if you could say, here are some things that you need to do or here's what you need to be wary of, what would you say? Firstly, I think what I've realized as I've got older is that these things about myself, these characteristics that I would always resent in regards to race and being mixed race, and, and but being able to now at age 28 claim the word, I am black, I don't say mixed race anymore. And I never felt like I could, you know, claim that word. And I really feel like I, I can. So I would have, I would tell myself to like, have claimed it sooner. Because it's yours. Yeah, it, it has opened up so much. Oh, so many amazing things for me. Just being able to like say that. I mean, there's so many takeaways from that, but it, it's a, such a reminder that all activism is, it's really about being activated as a person. And all it is, is being for someone else who you needed most in your most vulnerable moments. Our dreams are an offering towards a kind of different future, a better future, um, a future movement. Blake, are you a disruptor? Yes, um, I am. I, I think I am. I don't. I don't like status quo. Uh, I don't. I don't like what I'm supposed to be doing. I need that on a t-shirt. I mean, like, I, I think about my life and like, what's my alternative? Yes. I'm doing something that I shouldn't be able to do. How good does that feel? Like, I love that feeling. Ah, ah. Like, like I proved you wrong. I'm a tool to go out there to change perceptions and perspectives. To, to, to people to rethink and restructure their thought process and specifically for the disabled community, you know what I mean, specifically for the black community, um, to, to let them know that if you thought one thing, throw that out the window, because what you thought, I'm gonna prove that wrong. Ramala, you've been defiant. You have been a disruptor. And what would you tell the next you who's already out there? What do they need to know? The one thing I'd like to echo to you know, the future generation or the future me is that don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be a change maker and don't be afraid to be the first. Don't be afraid to be the first. That is a call to action. All of these conversations are about a fire that's lit, but that fire has been in you all for a really long time. People will look at Blake they look at Adra, they look at Ramla and they'll say, they're threatening, they feel threatening. And I wish that people could see you as the invitation that you are, because that's what this is. It's an invitation into something, perhaps an invitation into greatness or an invitation into self. And I think at the heart, that's so much about what activism is. And so what is your relationship 
to the word activism. What do you want to see change, Adwa? I mean, activist is what I say first, you know. Hi, my name is Adwa Burr and I'm an activist. Um, to anyone claiming the word activist, um, I would have a little think about what that actually means and, and, and what it is that you actually care about. Have you taken the time to really figure that out? Be picky, be ruthless, be solid, be meticulous in all the things that surround what you care about. When you disrupt, whether we want to or not, that is what we are. And when we do, again, the ripple becomes the wave, we become a tsunami of truth and a new truth because so much of this work is challenging what is true in our lifetime. So thank you so much for that sacrifice and that service to change to something greater. Thank goodness for you.